Hi everyone, and welcome to Worth the Calories, a Great British Bake Off podcast. We are here talking about Japanese week. We are. <laughs> or, as I might call it, Japanese-ish week. <laughs> An attempt at Japanese week. Yeah. I mean, Com bon moi. <laughs> Com- I, I think I'm just being a bit precious on time. No, I, I, well, okay, so let's set our stall out. We're... I, I think I'd say I'm a Japanophile. Japan yeah. for, Jap- Jap- Japanophile. I, I like Japanophile Japan, Japan, Japan and yeah. Japanese stuff very much. You are. I, I mean, also Japanophile, but I, I, sp- I spent four years in my very late teens, very early twenties living in Japan, and therefore, obviously, nothing has changed in the <laughs> one or two years since then. So, so clearly, I think I'm an expert in all things Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> but but have gone back repeatedly. Are a yeah. fluent Japanese speaker. Yeah. Are very into Japanese culture. So yeah. I think this was a week to be excited about, and and you know it has been exciting. Yeah, absolutely. But yes, watching back, going tenuous connections to the Japanese culture, here, which I suspect other people have done talked about when they did. Danish week and French week. Oh, absolutely. And, so. and, and it's kind of picking, the, the technical in particular, it's kind of picking something that it, it, it does apparently seem to be a Japanese to be a dessert. Thing. Yep. It's just one that I never, ever encountered when I was living over there. Yeah. So I think we'll, we'll touch on that more as we go through some of the challenges. Yes. I... Uh, so, so we've been watching a bit of reality TV. We've been watching a lot of RuPaul's Drag Race. Yep. And I had a thought on this... That is stemming from what they do on RuPaul's Drag Race. Way, right. Ways to make the Bake Off better. Okay. Obviously, lip syncing for your life <laughs> at the end of the, the competition would be amazing. <laughs> Could you imagine Mark and Laura lip syncing for their lives to some sort of baking themed pop song? <laughs> I'm just trying to think. What's the baking version of lip syncing? Like, biscuit for your life. <laughs> What would have been really good here, and this might be the way to get rid of poor Hollywood, uh-huh. but as an extension of poor Hollywood and 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 Leith obviously as well, why didn't they get a Japanese chef or baker on to be the uh, celebrity judge this yeah, week yeah, yeah, yeah. to talk a little bit about it and to really give that insight to it? And why do they not do this every week? That that's sort of going more into that that pottery show mm. style. Mm-hmm. What was it called? The the, the, the throwdown. The, the throwdown. Yeah, yeah. Because they had their, their technical challenge. They always had an expert yeah. of that type of pottery. And, come and on. whether it was someone on the art side of it or the creation yeah. side of yeah. it was quite nice. But you could even do. You know, Cake Week is a professional baker, but it could also be someone who works selling cakes at Marks and Spencers or. No, it could be yeah. it could be someone from industry. Yeah, it could be someone from the creation aspect. It could be someone who's. I mean, Joe Brand obviously is involved in Bake Off, but yeah, yeah, is another person yeah. you could have. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I really, I, I think I really would have liked that because it would have brought that air of knowledge to it, perhaps, mm. without it being. Paul Hollywood's experience in Japan making a Japanese program. Yeah, because I mean, gosh, every man and his dog goes to Japan and do, does another. Oh, isn't Japan quirky yeah, program? Yeah, and and I watch them because I love anything to do with Japan. But then I go, oh goodness me! It's not quirky when you live there. Can <laughs> yes. we stop fetishizing? <laughs> <laughs> How weird anyway. and kooky they are. Anyway. Um, Let's talk about the baking. Absolutely, and you've reminded me actually. What didn't uh, Sue Perkins do one as well? Oh, quite possibly. A while back, yeah, quite yeah. Possibly. Anyway, yes. So, signature was steam buns. Yes, steam buns. A variety of steam buns. Some very nice ideas for them, mm. and and everyone did them quite well. Yeah, absolutely. They all looked pretty tasty. Mm. Yeah. Is there something in this that it's actually a very broad signature option? Well, having had a go at them, mm-hmm. I, I think the 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 sort of the core thing of mm-hmm. making a dough putting a filling in and then steaming it is is a very um it's almost like saying make a sandwich do you know what i mean, like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> no that's such a good analogy as well yes. actually because like you know the excitement is not yeah. in in the sort of two slices of white bread it's yeah. well, what do you what do you put in it and so i think actually it was quite a quite a broad mm. a broad signature um, and obviously, there seemed to be something about decorating them as well, so they all yeah. looked cute too. Um, so I think it did allow them to bring a lot of their own mm. preferences in 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 the flavours. 
But yeah, I, I think it went really well. It was interesting to see some of the techniques involved because mm. uh, you know, this is the other side of it. This could have been a technical one yeah, year. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely, because certainly I think the um, getting filling in and then closing the bun over. Mm. Fiddly as hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's a technique is it's, what it seems to be. It's a technique, okay. so it totally could have been okay. it totally could have been a technique. Just before we talk about you trying them. The eating of gherkins. Oh, wasn't that pathetic? Let's talk on this because yeah, and you know, we do like to talk about every experience on yeah, the yeah. show. Yes, that's terrible. And and yes, we, we were saying when he was talking about Lottie's being dry, like, well if you'd had it as she prepared it and planned it. I- I do think that if you're a judge mm-hmm. on a food show, mm-hmm. you can't be saying, oh, I don't like that. I don't like them. Oh, no, I really don't like them. Yeah. Like, oh, we on. are hating on Paul Hollywood a little bit. Yeah, because I, it, it, I think he has outlived his time on the show. And, yeah. and I think he is now doing stuff that actually goes, no, that that's that's not the right thing to have done there. To insist or, or to ask them to make one without. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think... I think he did some good stuff this week. Uh, l- yeah. Later on, some of his judging Absolutely. comments were when very good. Absolutely, when we come good. to judging, yes. Yeah, but but you're right. I I I thought asking asking the contestants to change their signature last mm-hmm. minute for him when he's like fifty percent, or should we say seventy five percent of the judging comments, mm-hmm. and so he's tasting something that's not exactly how they planned it. No, I thought that was a bit unfair. Yeah, like have it and go. Yes, I can see consistency's good and so on, but the flavor, the yeah. flavor's not but for like, me. Which he does when something the flavor's not for him. He says that. So, if it was a sort of, if it was a, if it was a competition where he was just a paid judge and it wasn't essentially the Paul Hollywood show. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't be allowed to do no, that. You no. just have to eat it yeah. and judge it as best you can. <laughs> exactly. So, and that's some of what it would have been interesting to have someone yeah. with a proper background in this stuff. Mm. Anyway, of, so let's say so of all of the of all of the steam buns that mm. they made, which is the one that you'd like to eat the most? Oh, the katsu curry. Easily the katsu curry. <laughs> no, no, really. <laughs> <laughs> the burgers are an inspired idea. Yeah. That's a very good idea. I mean, you know, I love burgers. That's one yeah. of my go-to foods. That is a very good plan yeah. for what to do with these things for, for a Western palate. Yeah. And, mm. and if you were being asked to come up with your own steamed bun, would you put burger in it? Or I probably wouldn't. Would I would have gone to one of the sort of Chinese flavors, that sort of... Um, hoisin, barbecue yeah. that kind of marinated meat thing. Because that's what I think of when I think of steamed buns. I think of when we've been to Chinatown um, and, and we've had a dim sum or steamed buns when we yeah. did it in Japan itself and we had that sort of mm. sticky, sl- slightly sweet. Yeah, yeah. I think it really works because you make a fairly bland bun. Yeah, yeah. But it's then flavour with something with quite a punch, and that's mm. a flavour I like. What, and, and what would about you? Is there any? I, that... I, I'm the same. I'd mm. have gone. Um, I'm. I'm a little bit sad, but I think we can come up with the recipe ourselves. That we didn't have Laura's um, mm. pork and hoisin. Yes, and stuff that sounded filling, nice. But yeah, that um, sort of or, or teriyaki or yeah. 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 Mm. Well, we've got some uh, char siu p- sauce in the cupboard. Okay. We've got a pork belly in the we fridge. Do. The two of them are somehow going to come together over the next week. <laughs> and depending on how it goes, I may very well have another go at the steamed buns okay. and, and use some of the leftovers of, of, of that in the middle. So talk to me about making steamed buns. Yes. Mm. that was, I, I was a little nervous, if I'm honest. Cool. Because um, see, I, I was, I've never steamed bread. Right. Before. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, this, this seems like this could go terribly, terribly yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, we didn't even have a steamer. No. So, no, so you um, bought a bamboo steamer? Bought a bamboo steamer, actually not very expensive so at all. A... So is that basically a thing that sits over a pan of boiling water? Exactly. Okay. And you stick stuff in it. Okay. Um, theoretically, one can do vegetables in it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we have a microwave. <laughs> yeah. So, so making the dough, again, quite easy. Once mm-hmm. again, in the stand mixer with the dough hook. Once again, I was a bit nervous. Is the dough hook going to work? Once again, the dough hook worked. <laughs> so I need to uh, relax and trust the dough hook. The dough hook can have a pass now. <laughs> yeah, the dough hook. I've used it twice. It's worked successfully twice. I now appreciate that dough hooks work. Um, separately, I had to make the katsu sauce. Well, not the katsu sauce, because katsu actually means cutlet. There were no cutlets involved okay. here. Okay, yeah, yeah. But um, the, the curry sauce, mm. um, because, of course, it's Bake Off. You can't just use that nice, um, nice golden, pre- curry. golden pre-made yeah, curry yeah, yeah, yeah. from Waitrose. Um, uh, uh, other katsu curry <laughs> exactly. flavours are available. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, but, yeah, it was just uh, onions, 
celery, um, carrot, ginger, okay. um, curry powder, um, coconut milk. Right, is um, the main... And a bit of corn yeah, flour okay. to thicken it up mm-hmm. and then you... Blend it all in the food processor. Nice. We've actually got quite a lot left, so Good. we're, oh, we're, we're going nice to have some. We're going to have some curry. Yes, <laughs> we like a katsu curry yes, around here. Exactly. Yeah. We did eat it almost every other day for two weeks. <laughs> <Yes>. once, so. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was fine. Make the sauce, cool the sauce, put the chop the chicken up. The chicken goes in raw. Um, making mm. the dough were fine. I found out that the best place in our house to prove dough is the pantry on top of the tumble dryer after the tumble dryer's been on. <laughs> so my dough rose incredibly well. Um, chop the dough into eight. Oh, the one thing that didn't go that well right. was my colours. Right. So if yeah, you yeah, see yeah. the show, he's got this beautiful yellow dough. Mm. I put the turmeric in. Did it turn into beautiful yellow dough? No. <laughs> <laughs> but then I thought, uh, do I care that much? And cracked on no, it anyway. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. So, so yeah, the dough rose beautifully. Okay. Um, you chop it into eight. You form eight balls, make it rise again a bit. Mm-hmm. And then comes the challenging bit, which is basically um, flattening it into a circle. That bit was all right. Um, <laughs> but then judging how much filling to put in. Right. And then sealing, pinching it to seal. Okay. Really hard. Oh. I t- the first, well, for me, I found it really hard. Mm. I think it was a judgment thing. Yeah. Firstly, of how much to put in, and secondly, of taking care of how to get it to seal. Because what I found is I was putting possibly too much sauce in initially. Okay. As soon as the sauce squidges out to the edge or squidges mm. out, everything becomes very slippery and it doesn't ste- seal. Yes. Yeah. So of I had some very ugly open buns, <laughs> which I still steamed, which still tasted very nice. Yeah. Um, before I, I realised that less was more. Right. And and then basically what I found was successful was really pinching the outside and stretching it out to be really thin. Okay. And then bringing it up like either side and sort of stretch and pinch and stretch and pinch. Nice. And and that seemed to work quite well. Nice. Um, yeah, once I'd done that, I thought, oh, I'll have a go at the decoration because you leave <laughs> a little bit of the dough plain without the mm, turmeric mm. Um, and you're supposed to cut that into four. Um, put some red food colouring, some orange food colouring, mm. some black food colouring to have slightly different coloured bits of dough. You're supposed to massage it in with your fingers <laughs> until the dough the dough is purely that colour. I, I hate working with food colouring. <laughs> I, 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 as I was even poking with the skewer to uh, open mm. the bottles of food colouring, I was thinking, oh, I'm not going to enjoy this, am I? Uh, and I didn't enjoy it at all. Right. I ended yeah. up with horrendously coloured hands I ended up with three balls of slimy not properly coloured dough oh, no. um, at which point I was like uh, it's not going to change the flavour is it threw no. my toys out of the pram threw all of the sl- <laughs> slimy badly coloured dough in the bin and decided we were just having non-decorated oh. buns <laughs> <laughs> that bit's not for me <laughs> okay yeah that's fair but yeah the steaming was fine fine mm. so you, you you sit each of the buns on top of a square of uh, grease proof paper okay um i decided rather than to whack all eight in at once i was going to do a test steam mm. with my three ugliest mm-hmm. buns first um but yeah sit, sat over a big pan we had a pan that fit perfectly nice, for our steamers nice, nice, nice. fill it with boiling water whack your steamer on top steam it for 15 minutes have a sauna have a sauna <laughs> but yeah the, the buns really puffed up yeah um it, it all tasted good i was mm. happy yeah i think they've come out really really yeah. tasty i think you know it's, it's a nice katsu curry inside them yeah and the buns are nice and fluffy yeah so, so I, I think i think um barring the ridiculous food coloring travesty <laughs> um i think that was a success yeah to the extent i i would definitely consider doing them again but mm. but experimenting a bit with the flavors in the middle right so yes yeah no I, th- I think they've come out really well I think it's been really yeah. pleased yeah yes so everybody try your try some steamed buns yeah yeah they were good fully recommend it a- any, anything you've learned anything you think oh that's a really interesting thing that I will remember for future don't overfill your buns okay um Tumble dryer cupboard makes a good proving place. <laughs> yes, I think that's an interesting thing to remember, actually, because we struggle <laughs> yeah. with proving in this yeah. house. So we have a conservatory that for about two months is a decent temperature and the rest of the time is really hot or really cold. Yes. <laughs> so. but yeah, And I think the other thing is, for me, just in general with, with bread dough, y- use, the prov- use the dough hook. Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. it's good. It works. Okay. 
Yeah. And, and it, you use it for the actual kneading? Yeah, you just but... whack everything in the bowl. Okay. Wang everything in the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and set the speed to slow. Don't hook, does to do does okay. everything. I mean, so... you have to put the, in this one. You have to put water in a little bit by bit. Okay. And and when I was doing the babka, you have to put you feed your right. butter in okay. bit by bit. But th- there was no hand kneading at all. Oh, that's nice. That's so, nice. Mm. Yeah. Great. Good. Yeah, I think it's coming out really well. Yay. Okay. Technical. Technical. Technical was crepe meal um, matcha. matcha, crepe meal, meal, crepe thing. Yeah. Yes. That. Yes. Which you've done some research does seem to be... It does seem okay. to be a thing. Yeah. When they were doing it, I was like, oh, I've never heard of yeah. this. <laughs> but then I must say I wasn't massively into Japanese patisserie. And no. I did live up a mountain for three years. <laughs> There's a bit of hyperbole. (laughs) Up a mountain, you lived in a more rural environment. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) You weren't in Nepal in some (laughs) monastery or something. No, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, So this was an interesting one to see. Mm -hmm. I think they all did fairly well. I think each step of it, they all got. Yes. And it looked like the instructions were pretty complete, except for heating the egg and the sugar before making the meringue sequence. Right. So it's batter with some matcha in it, although the batter itself was not wasn't quite as normal as I would make for pancakes, but, uh-huh. you know, these are crepes rather than pancakes. Yep. I've never done crepes before. Fine. And you put the batter actually in the fridge. Okay. You, you know, and, and you sieve the batter, which I always like sieving batter. Okay. <laughs> we get rid of all the lumps always because matcha really does l- clump up. So yeah, yeah. Um, and then but then you make this white chocolate ganache, and it's not just white chocolate ganache. It's white chocolate ganache because it's white chocolate and cream. Yeah. But then you make a, a, a kind of Italian meringue. Effectively, you mm. you heat your sugar and and eggs, egg whites. And then when they reach a certain temperature, then you put them in the, you wang them in the stand mixer yeah. and um, do them as meringue to, to give them lots of air and lots okay. of soft peaks and so on. Fine. And then you um, whisk cream the butter okay. to make the butter really soft. Yeah. You add the white chocolate ganache to the butter. Yeah. So, you know, stretching whether it's ganache here. You then put in some of the meringue to mix it in properly. And then you fold in the rest of the meringue to give it volume yeah. and sweetness. I was about to say, was it the meringue giving it the sweetness? Because my goodness, that's sweet. Yes. Yeah. So that's... Well, and the meringue and the white chocolate, I guess. Yeah. So there's white chocolate and there's cream and there's sugar in the meringue, obviously. And then there's a lot of butter. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, you know, this, this cream is really quite rich. Mm. <laughs> um... You make your crepes. Yeah. Now, we didn't have a 30 centimetre frying pan. Nope. And I'm not going to buy a 30 centimetre frying pan for this technical because I'm never going to use it again. Because a 30 no, centimetre frying pan is ridiculous. Get in the way. Get in yeah. the way in the cupboard. Ridiculous and massive. You so, don't need that unless you have an enormous kitchen, which we do not. We, which we do not. I tried doing it on the flatbread pan that I bought for the Walker pastry last year. Yes. Which was interesting because it's ever so slightly domed. Okay. Ever so slightly. Um, you you pour the batter on. And I was trying to roll it around to get it all around yeah. everywhere, and you could even see even once it was cooking, because it's so non-stick, and then you wipe some oil on it as well. The cooked bit is sort of stretching back inwards. Oh, okay, it's it's almost like rubber contracting or elastic oh, contracting. So you try and you know you do it a bit more, roll it around on the pan. But obviously, every time all all the time you're rolling it around, you've not got it on the steam because you can't heat this pan. Yeah, because it's slightly domed. Because there's no contact point with the with the induction hob, so I had it over steam, effectively making a slightly large, but again it contracted, so not as large as I wanted it to be, rubber crepe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> For dear. want of any better word, oh, dear. <laughs> um, which is the one that was on the outside. So it was the okay. one that was done at the coolest temperature, effectively, and it was properly green, no brown, no burnedness to it. Right. So I was quite pleased with that, although as soon as you dump any matcha on top, it just becomes a matcha colour. So actually, yeah. I didn't need to worry about the look of them mm-hmm. because I then switched to the saute pan and just started frying them in the bottom of the saute pan because that's the best thing we got for that sort of thing. It was fine. And it was fine. Um, but I was doing them on quite a high temperature, yep. seven or eight on the okay. on the, on the the hob. 
And I think I should have done it cooler and for longer for each of them. Because they, some were coming out quite brown once you were cooking them, like pancakes do. So you couldn't see the greenness to them. Obviously, once it's, I, it, once it's in the cake, you can't tell. I was about to say, I genuinely did mm. not notice that. Yeah, once, it, once it's in the cake, you can't tell. But I was hoping to use one of them possibly for the outside and maybe use this slightly large but not large enough one to go around one side and do another large one to yeah. go around the other side. And I was like, none of these look like they could go on the outside. In the end, with the matcha dumped on top, it would have been fine. Yeah. Although the matcha dumped on top adds a very strong matcha flavour to it. So I think that's a mistake. But, you know, a little bit bitter. That's an opinion. <laughs> it did look like a sort of grassy knoll. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. I felt like you could have put little trees and well, stuff on the top. So it came out slightly strange. So you then start building them. So you do a crepe, put some cream on it, put another crepe, put some cream on it, put some strawberries on it, rinse and repeat until you've done them all. Yep. Fine. I was worried about the way it was sort of sloping downwards at the sides. Yeah. So I actually tried to build up the cream on the sides a little bit more, thinking, yeah, this will, will leave it nice and even. But actually, the, the areas where I've left a thicker amount of the cream, you can see it becomes this you know massive curvy bit in the middle of it. Yeah. So although, yes, it's kept the overall consistency quite okay, what I should have been aiming for was probably less cream on each layer, so to even out, because I did almost run out at the end, mm. and spread it with a palette knife really smoothly. Yep. Uh, and I think I didn't do it quite smoothly enough, because when you look at theirs, theirs are pretty nice dead straight layers. Yeah. Fine. Slicing the strawberries was fine. Slicing them thin, you know, you dry them out, that's okay. And then assemble, and then you put the cross underneath it, you put the large crepe and fold it over, which went quite well. And I left one crepe on top basically to form a, 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 an extra bottom, so that was okay. What was strange is it didn't, it was hard to flatten on top. Right. And I was like, it'd be fine, because when I turn it upside down, it's then going to flatten out. But obviously, by the time you, when you, I think we chilled it for much longer than they did, because it said chill for four hours. We chilled overnight, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, they would not have been able to chill for four yeah. hours, clearly. I think maybe half an hour in the freezer. But actually, it was all lumpy bumpy on, on right. what, what was going to become the bottom. Yes. And what I ended up keeping as the top. Right. Because when I tried to pull out the crosses, as it says, one of them came out really easy. I was like, oh, this is fine. It's really easy. Pulled the other one and it pulled one of the crepes halfway oh, with it. No. So the crepe that would have been on top that was on the bottom of that point was actually halfway around the side and the uh, bottom and the top. So I was like, oh, what a pain. That can become the bottom again, perhaps. <laughs> oh, good. Artistic license. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I think it's a pretty cake. I think it's really pretty once when you see it, you know, this nice green thing. Yeah, there is there is definitely like looking, especially once you slice it. Yeah, well, like, exactly. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's like yeah. Yeah, I think the the slices look interesting because they they got that splatter of red throughout them. Yes, you know, it's it's yeah, quite yeah. quite evocative. Mm. Mm. But it tastes fine. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's if I'm honest, it, it, it's it's just not my flavour. No. Like, even with, like, don't like matcha, mm -hmm. don't really like matcha in care. Well, okay, I can tolerate matcha if it's sparing. Yeah. Um, But I found there was, a, there was a real bitterness with the matcha in that. Mm. And and I just found the, the white chocolate ganache filling, like, weirdly sweet. Yeah, it, it would have been quite a nice cheesecake or layer on some sort of refrigerator cake yeah so it was some a biscuit base some of that and maybe a chocolate ganache top or something mm. like a chocolate tort with some of that would have been quite nice yeah but i think i think it really overpowers it when you hit a strawberry it's really nice yeah. i think it really works with strawberries so in some ways what the one thing i should have done is more strawberry because we've got a lot of strawberries left as well yeah. i think i really should have perhaps even every layer or make sure i absolutely cover the layers i do because i was doing them in sort of concentric rings so, it was a technical challenge I was able to do Excellent. without too much fuss. Yeah. I mean, I mean, not having the right equipment hurt it, but by and large, it all came together as it came together for them. So yeah. this really was about judging the construction of it, mm -hmm. judging some of the techniques for making it. But it's a batter and it's a ganache and it's a meringue yeah. and it's you know they're, they're all pretty competent. And then just, I think the the ingredients they gave us just about gave you enough to make the whole thing yeah just about i, mean, I think it was so. a good technical challenge mm -hmm. i think it was appropriate for the theme of the week mm -hmm. i could happily live without ever eating it again yeah absolutely yeah yeah well is there anything else that you would have wanted them to see when you when you're thinking staples of japanese cuisine particularly japanese sweet cuisine I, I think I think they did what they had to do right. in terms of because, like, as far as I'm concerned, Japanese sweets are 
they're a whole art form of themselves and the ones that I really remember were designed to be eaten as a very sweet thing alongside a tea ceremony. Okay, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And they're very different mm. ways of doing things. I mean, the cakes I had in Japan were sort of Japanized versions of Western cakes. Yeah, yeah. And the same with breads and, and yeah. sandwiches and things, so, yeah. Mm. So that's why I was, I was always I was a bit confused when they were like, oh, do Japan, Japanese week. I was yeah. Like, Really, we can do. That's a bit of a stretch. Yeah, <laughs> and and you know, there are things they could have done that would have been fine, but there are other cultures that I think are more worthwhile hitting first. I think yeah. Indian week yeah. would be hugely interesting. Mm. The range of breads and sweets and cakes yeah. in India. I think there's a lot they could cover. Is it is it because Paul Hollywood's just had a yeah. trip to Japan and a yes. program about Paul Hollywood going to Japan? I absolutely think that's yeah. what it is. Fair so, enough. Mm. Fair enough. Although I might watch that now. I didn't know he had to say that. Okay. Like, okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, the comedian that I want to see, Yuriko Katani, was on it, I think. Oh, I Riding him at one point. It. So, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, it would have been fun if they'd been like, and make pocky sticks or <laughs> melty kiss. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that, that's the sort of thing they could have done because that's where Japan excels sweets. Yeah. Make flavored four fingered wafer biscuit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Right, on to the showstopper. Yes. Now this is where it's the least Japanese of anything. Make a kawaii cake. Yeah, I know, right. <laughs> Not a cake from a Hawaiian island. No. Nope. <laughs> Not a scary cake. No. Nope, <laughs> a cute, cute cake. cake. Yeah. I appreciate that a few of them went for Japanese bakes as well. Yes. And I appreciate that the person who won, Lottie, not only did that, absolutely smashed it as well. Yeah, so I mean I, that looked amazing. It looked really good. The way it moved when she shook it, I think yeah. I think I have a lot of respect for what she did. Yeah, for, absolutely. For, again, we've said this about her before. She reads the brief and she sticks to the brief. But she really doubled down on the brief. Oh, it's Japanese week and I have to make a cute cake. Why don't I make a cute cake with a Japanese sponge? And and a whole like forest scape. Yes, absolutely. Let's not forget everyone else did a cake, which yeah. is what they were asked to do. So yeah. I have no problem with that. But she also did candy floss and, and, and like truffles. Pocky esque, pocky esque sort of yeah. chocolate sticks trees. Right. And, and I, how did she have the time for all that? Yeah. You know, she she properly blew it out of the park this week. I yeah. think. And, and the 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 fact that she did so well in the signature part of that is she did chips. Yeah. And it's easy to do, but good on her. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, I'm serving you burgers, I'm doing chips as well. Like, yes, nice. that's the little touches that will set you apart if yeah. you can pull it off. Yeah. If you try to do stuff. Like this is reminding me of Flora, who always tried to do stuff, and towards the end it never quite came off for her. But yeah, Lottie, so. she is pulling it off. So, yeah. so fair yeah. play to her. Really mm. good, really good. Any of the cakes you particularly liked? Any of the designs you particularly liked? I mean, Lottie's by far my favorite. Favorite. Yeah. Um, I appreciated that um, Peter did Castella, because for me that is a type of cake that is is sort of very much linked to Japanese souvenirs. There's right. lots of okay, tourist yeah, towns yeah. I go to went to in Japan where you'd get box of boxes of Castella, um, <laughs> which you know like individually wrapped, sort of mm. properly heavy duty. Not all that pleasant if I'm on a sponge cake. <laughs> you know? I mean, no, no, that's that's wrong. It's just very, very robust sponge cake, as it had to be because of the way it was being sold and okay. served. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it made me smile that he he'd gone, he'd investigated and done his research. Nice, good lad. Um, but yeah, I mean, I thought the most beautiful cake, other than Lottie's, was mm. actually uh, Ermine's. Well, but it wasn't. Uh, it really wasn't. It really yeah. wasn't a cute cake. It was not cute at all. <laughs> well, it was. I'm like, and, and, did you did you read the brief once? I mean, it, it, have an idea and then sort of drift off. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I think happened. I think I could see it in a kind of Death Note Attack on Titan anime cake. It has some of yeah, that yeah. sort of you know slightly stylized. Oh, oh, the the um, manga that uh, Live Die Repeat Edge of Tomorrow is based on, right? Because that's based on exactly that sort of yeah. you know out there style. Um, but it's not cute. No, it it wasn't at all, and, and that was a shame because it sounded like it was quite nice. But fine. Yeah. Mm. You know when you're reading a book or studying or something, and you learn a new word. Yes. And you suddenly notice that word everywhere, and you find yourself using it a lot because it finds it seems to be a useful word. Yeah. Has Paul just learned the word concertina? 
<laughs> oh, <don't know. laughs> or is it just this season? There've been a number of occasions to yeah. talk about Cake's concertinaing. It just seemed to be this episode he was suddenly using it. <laughs> and I'm sure they've never. I'm sure they've talked about compressed or squashed or. Maybe. And they'll suddenly talk about concertinaing. Who knows? <laughs> I know I'm very down on Paul, but it was yeah. like, why are you asking everyone very, the same? Thing? Very down on Paul on his hundredth episode. On his hundredth episode, he's done a hundred episodes. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Um. What would you have made? What would have been your kawaii cake? Well, this is why. Pocky sticks stand out to me because I would have made a pocky stick looking cake, but like a massive pocky stick with a big smiley face or something. Nice. Maybe even two sticks leaning up against each yeah. other. Yeah, something on those lines in a nice cake form. I don't I don't know what the sponge would be because I'm not quite so well versed in yep. Japanese sweet things. But Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Cause again, it's I, I would have designed a smiling version of a very Japanese thing. Nice. Because I think where nice. I would have gone. I, I I'm just looking straight oh, at your yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> your Super Mario mushroom, and I'm like, <laughs> you just scared the cat. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think I'd have been going for something like that, something from a Mario world, but that was a simple shape. Yes, you're making me wonder now. Is is there an issue with branded? Oh, I don't know. Goods, and of course, Pocky is branded, so you know other yeah. other. Sticks covered in chocolate are available. <laughs> yes, indeed. Hmm. But yeah, that would have been nice, you know, Mario Star or something. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But, but I think that there was a nice thing that they all designed something. Yes. Whether it came off, whether it was quite cute enough, and so on. I think the and the avocado was an inspired idea. That was, <laughs> it was a awful. Really good idea, and I feel so sorry for him that it didn't come off. Just he's got. I mean. I think he is quite creative. I, th- I think he's very creative. I think he's been excellent throughout. It's just, I think sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes it feels like um, someone needs to edit his creativity sometimes mm. and just go, okay, okay, let's dial that back and make it slightly more normal. Then we'll be fine. But I don't think this was too out there. I think avocado cake is a thing. You not, can, you can not, make not a thing that I wish to eat. No, but you can make cake out of anything. By and large, and people do, particularly with vegetables. And I think the avocado is a very clever idea, actually. And and doing it in that stylized way is a very good idea. So, but he just baked it wrong. Yeah. It clearly did not come off for him, and that and that's a real shame. So, mm. you know. no, he's a nice guy. Yeah, really liked him. Mm. Uh, shame, shame to see his go. But I don't think I don't think being competent and a nice person is good enough at this level of the no. Competition. No. Interesting. The other mark. He was quite quiet this week, but quietly competent. Each yes. Round. Yeah. I think. I think they're they're figuring out what to focus on, and, and part of what they're focusing on is like between Lottie and Mark. There were clearly a good relationship had developed there, and they were getting on very well and being very funny at each other. I think she's really funny. Yes. And and has a very winning personality. For, it, it works for me. I think yeah. I find her very funny. I find her very effective on TV. So I think focusing on that and giving her lots of chances to be dry. her personality. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Dry, quite sarcastic, a bit self-deprecating. Yeah, yeah brilliant. I'll take it. Mm. No, it's, good. it's on, good. On the flip side, this is the thing that we were saying about them being in lockdown to get in a bubble together, that they have formed closer bonds, yes. I think. And all the bakers have seemed to form lots of very good bonds mm. in the past, but I think this lot properly, properly have gotten to know each yeah, other. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know who we haven't spoken about? Go on. Laura. Well, no, that was the last one to come to because hers was an or, another very good idea. Yeah. A, a, a caricature, a caricature, character, whatever, upside down pineapple cake. Brilliant. Yeah, I, I, it was lovely. And, really good. And I almost made that this week. <laughs> right. Because I think the cake sounds delicious. Okay. Something that I might be might be into baking or into mm. eating. Could make me that for my birthday. You want cake. me to make you an upside down pineapple cake for your birthday? Well, just pineapple cake. Does you don't need to decorate it? Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm not that fussed about with the a salted caramel and chocolate sauce to go on it. Oh no, no, no too no, much, too much. Just a pineapple just cake. Just a pineapple cake. Okay. Or, or I might just reserve the right to change my mind what I want for my birthday. Good. Let's not do this around on the next week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not the best radio for anyone. Is it? Sorry. I used to do this podcast. They talked about what cake they were going to make for someone's birthday. It was a bit for much. hours. <laughs> for hours. It was just constant. It was a non-stop birthday cake podcast. That would be a good podcast. Get a different person on a week before their birthday and talk about the cake they want. Perfect. Brilliant. As long as we didn't have to then produce it. Well, yes. This is not a bake-off. 
discussion though is it no, um you can cut this bit out i'm, I'm leaving it all in there's no editing on this whatsoever they're gonna hear you hitting the microphone they're gonna hear cats jumping cats attacking, cats attacking your cardigan. cardigan guys there's a lot of good content that comes that goes out of these shows okay. um yeah i think she didn't say i need to have a good day tomorrow but she had a good day tomorrow yes yes absolutely yeah if she hadn't had a good if she hadn't had a good showstopper mm-hmm. and mark hadn't had a bad showstopper she'd yeah. have been out end yeah. of story yeah uh, uh, you know prue said it she expected it to go and yes she had a very bad first day mm. i think um peter peter was worried yeah but i think he came off really well and then technical and, and yeah, showstopper exactly mm. Mm. i do feel like i uh, you know we don't normally have these conversations uh, hermine and laura are the next ones to go possibly <clears throat> Possibly. Mm-hmm. Yes. I don't know. And it's, you know, the, as they say, anyone can have a bad week and suddenly go. Mm. Um, I feel like the others are just starting to They're really focus. St- yeah, yeah, hitting their stride, whereas mm. maybe Laura and Hermine had a had a wobble yeah. this week. And, and have had wobbles. Yes. So, yes. Although I think, I, I'm sure I saw a comment that there's now a thing of if you struggle one week in this series, you leave the next week. Okay. Seems to be the pattern that's happening. So. Okay. Whether, whether that's the thing. Yeah. There was also the thing of people at the beginning saying, oh, yeah, I'm excited for this week. <laughs> that seems to be a pattern <laughs> yeah, as well. Absolutely. <laughs> is that the clue? Yeah. <laughs> but what, what what is next week? I can't remember. Nor can I. Oh, really hot week. Really I can't hot remember week. what they would do. Oh, ice cream. Oh, yeah. It's ice cream and it looked like these were the 30 degree days. Oh, that's just so hard. Which is really harsh, so but harsh. what can you do, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, maybe, maybe they could have done something with the shooting schedule. But if this is the thirty degree week, yeah, this, this you can't do really anything. Not, you know, you yeah. just gotta live, live through it. Exactly. Rely on and, your freezer and hope that the judges let them off a bit. Yeah. 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 Okay. A good it. week. Uh, still a good season. This is the, this. You know, I said it earlier. It's a funny episode, and we've had a couple of very funny episodes. Yeah. Coupled with. You know, there is humour from Matt and, and Noel, but I think in this one, really well, was how they supported the Bakers. Yes. You know, when Laura was having a proper, proper meltdown, meltdown. Yeah, he went and spoke to her really nicely. But I saw, I, I think Matt went and did the same thing to someone earlier mm-hmm. and really G'd them up to it and got them into the thing. Ah, so it's good. It's yeah. good. I, I'm enjoying that aspect coming back into it. Agree. Or, or seeming to come back into it. I don't think it's ever not been there. But, but it feels but like it stands out more. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Super. Good. So join us next week. We're going to talk on some ice cream. We're going to make some ice cream. Possibly not with our ice cream maker. Do we have room in the freezer? <laughs> <laughs> Having just stocked up because we're going back into breakdown. Lockdown. Lockdown. Not breakdown. We're going into, we're permanently in breakdown. It's 2020. What else do you think we're doing? <laughs> oh, dear. Join us then. We'll talk about some ice cream. Let's do it. And let's bake. Yay.